Beware, you're in for a scare. From the pages of R.L. Stein's best-selling books comes a brand new series of Goosebumps videos. Videos that will creep you out, freak you out, or simply make you laugh your head off. Hello, Goosebumps fans. So we're back. So here's the thought of this whole entire thing, and I can put this away now. I don't need this. I can throw this to the side. There we go. All right. Let's see. Now, we have so many things that happen during. And again, like I said, because this is going to be rehashing because all of a sudden, well, I don't get to have a week or so. We're doing it right now. I'm pretty sure because note that Paparina said that Marco is a blank slate, an empty slate. And I like my idea always of where it's like if the person's telling the story is the person telling the story unless there's something up with that like for instance in be careful what you wish for samantha bird was telling this whole entire story as a bird um what's his name greg i don't remember but the one from my harris adventure it was a talking dog telling us this return of the mummy oh yeah um gabe was in the hospital as he was telling the story he most likely died within a day later of telling us the story that's how it goes <laughs> that's how it goes man that's how it goes it's pretty funny if you think about it it's like it's pretty funny and thinking about it, it's like oh legend of lost legend who is the person telling that story it gets crazy it's like who's telling that story i'm pretty sure the kids ditched the dad <laughs> the kids ditched the dad so they can tell the story <laughs> anyways anyways in this case, we have Marco telling a story, but at the end, it was Keith who was telling the story. So this brings us to the part of where it's like, it's either A, Keith was telling the story the whole entire time, and Marco was just the persona he decided to do. is because, well, the kid's upstairs. Why not act as if he is Marco? And then, you know, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, it's like, yeah, but... Well, let's just say that since he actually is a monster, I don't think we never actually had a monster talking and telling us a story, right? Because Attack of Jack-O-Lanterns, that's a no-go. Um, my best friend's invisible. He, again, he was just an invisible boy. There's no actual monster telling a story before. We don't have one except for the blob day, everyone. That's the only one that ever actually had. But even then, it's like... It was a fictional world anyway, so that still doesn't count. So yeah, the monsters never actually have a story where they're telling the story. So that means that we have to go with the idea of he just used Marco as a mouthpiece. And well, since he was hurt during the time and he doesn't really want to go and interfere with Marco's mind, especially after all that he did because yeah, it's like yeah he didn't want to do that again so since he didn't want to do that again and this makes sense why how in the world they were able to go into the house in the first place and go down in the basement if they have the psychic ability besides shape-shifting and it's like wait a squirrel wait couldn't a squirrel actually have been keith or his mom hmm that makes sense so keith wasn't there because he was the squirrel Hey, <laughs> but anyways, this makes sense why the mom and Keith were able to go in and out of the basement if they wanted to. It's because they were able to use psychic abilities to make themselves invisible or shape shifting. So with their psychic abilities, which I would like to lean that towards that one more. The reason why he doesn't Margo doesn't anything is because Keith doesn't know anything about Margo. He doesn't know anything about Marco since he doesn't know anything about Marco and doesn't want to dive deep in it because at this point he was hurt since he is hurt. He can't get actual good details on Marco. I mean, yeah, he could actually have joined his friends and he could have actually mind read every single one of them in there, but I don't think he wanted to do that just because they would feel weird and then all of a sudden if he's going through all their minds and all of them are acting like uh my head then it's like they all look and it's like he's not saying ow my head what's up with this kid dum 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 they didn't feel weird until this kid came along so that's why he most likely didn't read uh, marco's mind when he was in 
peak status. But then as soon as he got hurt, he needed Marco to help. So for all we know, he could have actually gotten Marco. It's like it couldn't have maybe not even been his mom because his mom was most likely away. I don't know where um, Keith's mom went, but she most likely wasn't in the picture because if she was, then she would have stopped Keith from going outside, period. So that means that he had to have done something psychological to make Marco actually help him. So he got Marco to help him once using his mind. But then as soon as he was able to get him to go, sadly, that was all the ability he has left. He couldn't actually make Marco do anything. Instead, he had to subjectively be like, Marco, you got to help me. Marco, you need to come to me. Marco, you need to help nurse me back to health. So that's why all the nightmares and stuff, that's why all that freaking issues. And he's been sifting to his mind, trying to help himself. But sadly, Keith couldn't do it. The doctors of Dr. Bailey, oh, that was either because he couldn't remember who Dr. Bailey looked like because he had to be a physician of Marco's. He had to be Marco's doctor. It could be even a fact of where he's trying to sift through doctors and all those doctors is either doctors that he's seen on TV or doctors he had during his life. A doctor when he was a little baby, a doctor when he was a little kid, and a doctor what he has now. But due to not knowing how to really navigate, and especially he's hurt, he can't tell which doctor ba which doctor is Dr. Bailey. He only knows the word name Dr. Bailey. So that's why that was one issue. Let's see anything else. He decided to do something with Gwen, me, Gwen, Gwenny. Anyways, he tried to do something to make her like, Bleh. and well, it's kind of crazy where it's like, and it was getting worse before it got better because, well, he decided to mix things up to where it's like he forgot now because fresh wound, Gwenny was the one who hit him. It's either, it's like, it's most likely that because we don't see Marco and Gwenny at the end of the book. So I have to think that it's Marco only. He's a single child. So, or it's the fact of where Gwenny is his younger sister and he wanted to have Marco at least, you know, same footing as each other, that they're both single, that they both actually are just only child and they both have just one mother. I don't know for sure, man. I don't know for sure. It's, it's kind of hard to figure that part out. So with that, with that idea, then that means that I'm pretty sure the first narrative is that Gwenny hit Keith Keith went down, Marco helped. Marco helped him take him back home. And of course, he had to do a special, you know, zzz, 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 zzz. yeah, that's what he had to do. <laughs> yeah, I think Jeremy didn't help. It's like, yeah, Jeremy didn't help this time at all. Yeah, it seems that Jeremy might have helped too, but I don't know for sure. And let's see. Yeah, so he actually mixed it up to where Gwenny hit him to Jeremy hit him. So we don't know which one actually hit. Could have been Jenny, could have been Jeremy. We don't know for sure. We don't know which reality is real, but considering Jenny was nowhere to be found at the end of the book, I might have to say the first one happened where Jenny was the one who hit him. But because of that concussion that Keith suffered, he couldn't keep his facts straight. To the point of where it's like, yeah, it's very, very hard for him to keep the illusion if he's hurt. If he's actually hurt. So that's what's going on is that I'm pretty sure he has psychic abilities. And maybe even shape-shifting. Like, he might have like a little bit of shape-shifting or a lot of shape-shifting. Could be the fact of where he actually shape-shifted and he was the dog. <laughs> yeah, we don't really know what reality is what, but I'm pretty sure that... All this was just Keith using his psychic abilities to get Marco to help him. But as soon as his mom returned and his mom's able to nurse him back to health, he doesn't need Marco anymore. And at this point, he tried to use his psychic abilities now to say, you're dreaming. Go away. You're asleep. This is not real. And it's like, yep, he's using his psychic abilities and it most likely worked. <laughs> it's like, there's no way that actually is like, it's not happened. It didn't work. I'm pretty sure he has psychic abilities and he was able to get Marco to leave. 
It's like, how else did his mom leave? It's like his mom left and it's like, well, if they are humans, but then secretly sludge monsters or I don't know, I guess sludge monsters, whatever, or intestinal monsters or whatever. The thing is that how do they leave the house? What do they eat? How do they eat? Well, at least what do they eat? It's the real question. They have to actually go out and get food. And the mom most likely goes out and get food. Yes, they could go upstairs and steal food from them, which that does make sense. On the other hand, maybe the mom actually has something else that she needed to do. And that's why she wasn't there. So it's like, I don't know for sure. But the whole thing of help me, you need to help me. I live in your basement, you need to help me. It makes me think that the mom was nowhere to be found until he got healed. Until he actually got nursed back to health well kind of and could we say that maybe marco did heal him up and then he was able to wipe marco's memory of him and then marco just went around his way and he thought that marco's not going to show up again in the basement because why would he and then all of a sudden there we are the weird part is like where's the pool table it's like hmm, that's a good question maybe the pool table does exist still down there i don't know it's kind of weird that it's like, okay, well, if he does have shape shifting abilities, why didn't he just shape shift to something else? <laughs> He's like, yeah, why doesn't he just shape shift to like a squirrel or something, a squirrel again, and just scurry away? So he's like, blah, 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 what? <laughs> but of course, I'll make him go back down in the basement. So I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I think that was better that he just used his psychic abilities, and it makes more sense that way. So that's my thoughts on. I live in your basement. I think I finally got a gist of it. But on the other hand, I could be dead wrong. But right now, this is my stance is that Keith has psychic abilities and he's a shapeshifter. He might be truly a shapeshifter where he can shapeshift to anything. Or he has psychic abilities, which makes him able to go into people's dreams and make them do what they say or try to. But considering he got hurt too much. He couldn't actually make Marco do anything. Instead, he had to try to give him some pushing to do it. Give him a little bit of pushing. And actually just showed him how much pain he was in too. But I doubt that. I'm pretty sure since he's not that powerful of a telepath, a psychic, he's doing it. But the pain also can be felt too as he's trying to get him to help him. Anyways, I was scary. I was scary night.